Welcome to the DAISY Coding for Good Badges. Learn what makes computers work and explore how to create apps and video games that help others by earning these three badges. The three DAISY badges are 1. Coding Basics 2. Digital Game Design 3. App Development Remember, where you see this camera symbol Please be sure to take a picture to share with your troop in order to earn the badge. Badge 1 is Coding Basics. Step 1 is to create algorithms for a computer that follow a sequence. Step 2, learn about women in computer science. Step 3, explore sorting algorithms. If you want to do this plugged in, meaning actually on a computer, Click the link below to go to the badge page where you will find instructions for setting up an online account. Step 1 is to create algorithms for a computer that follow a sequence. That's a lot of big words there. An algorithm is used by computer scientists who are called programmers or coders. They use a special language to tell the computer what to do. The programmers write a list of steps, called an algorithm. The order the steps are in is called the sequence. The computer follows the steps exactly, even if they're wrong. Can you create an algorithm for something you know how to do? Here's some ideas. Make your bed. Do you know how to make your bed? Create an algorithm or write out the steps you use to do that. Make cookies or a cape. Cake. A recipe is an algorithm. Following the steps can help you make a cake. What about making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? What do you need to do? Have you had a s'more? Write down the steps you'd use to make a s'more. What else? Is there something you do with your family that you can turn into an algorithm? Write it down and then take a picture or print out your document. Step two, learn about women in computer science. Nearly 200 years ago, the very first computer program was written by a 17-year-old girl named Ada Lovelace. Women have been involved in computer science and coding since the very beginning. They're still creating new computers and computer programs today. How would you use a program and a computer to help someone solve a problem. Do some research about women in computer science. You may want to choose Ada Lovelace, Grace Hopper, Katherine Johnson, or Margaret Hamilton. Before watching any video or visiting any website, please make sure you have a parent with you and follow all internet safety rules. Step three is to explore sorting algorithms. Computer scientists use sorting algorithms to tell a computer how to put information into a list that follows a certain order. Imagine you want to find a photo of a golden Labrador puppy. You type golden Labrador puppy into a search bar. Photos of puppies appear on your computer screen. Lots and lots of puppies. The photos you wanted, the golden Labrador puppies, are all shown first before pictures of other dogs, like pugs or collies. This happened because a programmer used a sorting algorithm to show you all the puppy photos and to show you the golden Labrador photos first. So what can you sort and how can you sort it? Look around you. You may want to sort things in your very own house. What can you sort? Maybe your family. Stuffed animals. What else do you have? How can you sort it? By age, by name, by height, by type of stuffed animal, by type of toy. That's it. Congratulations. You've earned Coding Basics. That's the first badge in the Daisy Coding for Good badge series. Our next badge is coming up soon. Now for badge two, digital game design. Playing video games is fun. They can also help you learn new things or make the world a better place.
programmers use algorithms and sequences to make games for computers. Once they design a game, they test it and look for ways to make it even better. Explore the world of digital game design and design your own maze game. For this series, we are going to be offline as well, meaning you are going to design using objects you have around the house with you. Step one is to explore tools used to develop digital games. Step two is to plan a maze game. And step three is to build, test, and improve your maze game. Step one, explore tools used to develop digital games. All computers need directions or algorithms to follow. When a game is played on a computer, it's called a digital or video game. When you design a digital game, you decide what kinds of challenges the players face. You also decide what the characters in the game do. Then you write code for the computer to run the game. Learn how maze games work and write an algorithm to move a character through a maze. But first, it's time to play a game. What's your favorite unplugged game? That's a game that doesn't need a computer. Do you have Candyland, Connect Four, Checkers, another game you'd like to play? Play it with your family. You may pause this and come back when you've played it. Next, you're going to work with an adult. Have the adult make a maze for you. There are links underneath this presentation to help the adult set up a maze for you to follow. Don't look while they're setting up and then they'll guide you through it. Then you'll have a chance to make your own. Be sure to take pictures as you play with your family. Step two, plan a maze game. When you create something new, like a cupcake recipe or a video game, you use your imagination. First, you think about what you wanna make and what it will look like when it's done. Then you plan the steps it takes to make it. Computer programmers use this same process to design video games. They plan the steps to make the game, then they build and test the game. That's how you can find your best ideas, not just your first ideas. So now it's time to, for you to design your own maze game. Design it on paper. Use a grid. We've provided one in the link below or graph paper of your own or plain paper. What is your goal? Are you going to use pictures? What else are you going to do? Pause this presentation and design your maze game. Step three, build, test, and improve your maze game. Now it's time for you to build your own maze game. We're going to build it in 3D using objects from your house. How can you know if your video game works? You have to test it. When programmers design video games, they play test them. They try out the games to see if and how they work. Sometimes they find mistakes to fix. Sometimes they discover ways to make the game even more fun. Each time they play test and make changes, they make their game better. Testing and improving your game with your friends and family is fun and smart. So make it 3D. Take your maze and build it on the floor. Test it out. Have somebody walk through your maze following your instructions. Talk to them about what worked and what did not. Then it's back to the drawing board to redesign it using their feedback and what you experienced during the first test. Play again and test it out again. Keep going until you have the maze you want to build. Take pictures of each test and report on the final outcome. That's it. You finished the digital game design badge. Step two or badge two in the Coding for Good Daisy badge set. 
Stay tuned for Badge 3 coming up shortly. And now we're on Badge 3, App Development. Computers used to be big enough to fill a whole room, but now they can fit in your hand. Today, smartphones and tablets are more powerful than the NASA computer that sent the first astronauts to the moon. Most devices have programs on them called applications, or apps for short. Some apps are just for fun, but others help people. So learn how programmers tackle big problems and make great apps. Step one is decompose your problem into smaller steps. Step two is design an app that solves the problem. And step three is to share and improve your app. Step one, decompose your problem into smaller steps. What would you do if you had to build a sand castle? You could try to pile up sand, but quickly find out that you wouldn't work very well, right? Here's a better way to build a sand castle. First, you decide to build the castle away from where the water could wash it away. Then, you gather your shovel and bucket. Next, you fill up your bucket with sand and pat it down tight. Then, you build your sand castle, bucket by bucket, until it's tall and strong. What did you just do? You took a big problem and broke it into smaller steps. This is called decomposition. Computer scientists also use decomposition when they write programs. Helping kids. Lots of apps have been created just to help kids. Some apps have puzzles that can help you learn about science. For example, in one puzzle app, you'll find what's happening to water when it flows in a river. Other apps can help you learn to read, take care of your pet, or make friends. If you can think of something kids need help with, you can make an app for it. We are going to start off by identifying a problem. And our problem is going to be finding a lost puppy. Listen to the story, stop the video when instructed and do the activities, then come back and share with your family. So here we go. The scenario is this. You just started volunteering at a local animal shelter. You get to play fetch with the puppies. You pet the cats. You sweep the cages. But your most important job is helping people find their lost pets. This afternoon, a family came in. Their puppy, Juliet, went missing. You bring the family around the shelter to look for their puppy, but don't have any luck. So you help the family to make a lost puppy sign to put up at the shelter and around the park and neighborhood. So here is where you can stop the video and make your own lost puppy sign. Be sure to take a picture of it. Start up again when you're back. The next part is to post the poster on the shelter's bulletin board. You realize you need to spread the word so everyone knows there's a lost puppy. You want to tell everyone you know. Unfortunately, you only have the one poster, so you get to work making more. We'll just pretend that you made lots and lots of signs. You spend hours and hours making hundreds of signs. You finally run out of paper and your markers run dry. So you hit the pavement with your posters and tape and spend the rest of your day putting up posters. Part three of our scenario happens the next day when you go back to the shelter. Another volunteer tells you that three lost puppies were brought in. So you take your poster and you walk around the shelter to see if you recognize Juliet. You stop at the first puppy. Nope, not her. You walk to the next puppy. Mwah, nope, not Juliet. You walk to the last puppy. You stop. Yes, it's Juliet. You call the family and tell them the good news. Later, the family arrives at the shelter. You reunite them with Juliet and the problem has been solved. So how are we going to take this 
into the app development. Let's go further. So step two of our badge is to design an app that solves the problem. The problem was having a lost dog. So what did you do and what did you make in step one? And we're going to turn that into an application. Computer scientists use what's called a storyboard. They draw out their application, including the problem and the steps they want to take. For example, they'll sketch out what the home screen, what you see when you first open the app, could look like, including buttons, pictures, and words that may appear there. They'll also sketch out other screens that are part of the app and put them in order, showing how the user could move from one screen to the next. Where else could we see drawings that show you something in a specific order? Think about comic books or graphic novels, recipes, Brainstorm on what apps help reunite families with their lost pets could look like. Now you're going to design the app. What are some things that a lost pet app could do? Write them down on a piece of paper. What were some of the things you did to decompose the problem and help re reunite Juliet with her family in step one? How could you use an app to do each of these things? Again, write them down on a piece of paper. You can always pause this presentation and return to it later. When app developers have a new idea for an app, they draw it on paper first. They show their drawings to other people and ask for their ideas on how it could be better. This helps them to try out different things before they start coding. Now you're going to draw screens for your lost pet app. Form an app design team with another member of your family. Work together to design four screens that show how your app will help families to find their pet. Your app should include one or more special app features that help to solve the problem. App features are the different parts of an app. They could be things like using the camera, a welcome video, a help page, or a way for app users to connect with friends. There are blank app screens attached to this presentation. Now that you've developed your app, you need to share and improve it. Share your application with your family or send it to a friend. Get feedback on what they liked and what they would like you to add or change. Make the changes and then share it again. Most programmers don't ever say they're done with their apps. They keep working on ways to make them better and better. That's it. Congratulations, you've earned the App Development Badge as part of Coding for Good. What to do when you finish these badges? Be sure to take pictures of what you've done. Fill out the badge report found here at the bottom of the presentation. Note there's a special one for this group of badges since there are three of them grouped together. Turn in your badge report or email to your leader and she will tell you what to do next. Thank you for joining us for the Daisy Coding for Good badges. Bye-bye.